again, it is me, Esty here. I'm back. Thank you so much if you did watch my first video because it was really encouraging that a few people did watch it. And thank you if you've subscribed, that's really cool. So I did a poll on my Instagram to see what videos you would be interested to see from me in terms of longer form content. And one thing that a lot of people voted for was information about sustainability. For example, how I spot greenwashing, how I know if a brand is really sustainable or not. So I recently had this in the forefront of my mind because of making a big post about reviewing all of the sustainable brands I've ever tried. And I did a really deep dive into all of those brands about how sustainable they really were. So if you haven't seen that, go over to my Instagram at Estee of Sustainability because I, not to toot my own horn, but I do think it's a really good resource and I worked really hard on it. If you want to know the thought processes that I was going through as I was reviewing, how sustainable are these brands really? Is there really greenwashing here? Can I trust that this brand really is sustainable? If you want to know how I did that and you want to be able to do that for yourself, then watch this video. I will say I'm, I have no qualifications in this. I just have done a lot of research online. So how I check whether a brand is sustainable or not. I'm looking out for certain things. And these are my red flags. If I see these things, this brand is not sustainable. So red flag number one, they have produced a sustainable line, but 90% of their products are not sustainable. The case study for this is H&M. They have their sustainable line, but 90% of the products that they're putting out into the world are not sustainable. So if you buy from this brand, you are putting money into unsustainable practices they don't really care about the environment their business is built around the model of let's make as much profit as possible and they've made this line to increase the profit not to actually benefit the environment so because the motive behind their business is profit not the environment obviously environmental businesses do have to make a profit but if your main motivation is to put out better products for the environment you're gonna have a very different impact compared to somebody whose number one motivation is to make loads of profit. H&M are not a sustainable brand. Yes, they might use a small percentage of recycled materials in a small number of their clothes, but that is not enough. These guys have so much money and resources. I've noticed they'll often say, oh, we're gonna do this by 2025, or we're gonna do this by 2030. These guys are a super rich brand. They, these guys have the money, they have the resources. If they wanted to make it happen, if they wanted to be 100% sustainable, then they could. But instead of doing that, they're continuing with 90% of their products being unsustainable. They're continuing. Those 90% of products aren't just neutral. They are actively doing damage. So if you are supporting someone like H&M, thinking you're being sustainable, then first of all, like kudos to you for trying. And believe me, I've been here. I've been the person who was prioritising buying from H&M because I thought, look, they're doing the most. Let me tell you now, they're not doing the most. If it's just a conscious line, but 90% of their work is exploiting people and environment, they're not sustainable. Red flag number two, they don't pay their workers fairly. A sustainable business is one that is sustainable for everyone. If a brand are not prioritising paying their workers, then they are not an ethically minded brand. Countries where garment workers are sourced are often the most vulnerable to climate change. So we've got an example of this at the moment in Pakistan. They have been completely flooded. Their economy has been damaged by the fast fashion industry. Their economy has been damaged by the fact that Western businesses are sourcing their garment creation over there, which means that people are trapped in a cycle of poverty. They are not equipped to deal with the consequences of climate change because they are being trapped in cycles of poverty. Their economy is being damaged by fast fashion businesses not paying fair labour wages. So this is a really big red flag for me. If a company cares about preventing climate change, minimising the damage of climate change, it will pay their workers in other countries fairly. So how can you tell if they're paying their workers a fair wage? We've got to think about what is the true cost of a garment. How much does it actually cost to source the material fairly, to make sure it's organic, to actually pay a worker a fair wage? How much does this cost? And I'm sorry to say that it costs more than high street brands are charging. If you look at an example of an ethical business, someone like Lucy and Yak or Represent, or someone like... Organic Basics, for example, they are on the higher end, I would say, of pricing in terms of ethical brands, but you look at how much they're charging for a t-shirt, 
I'm sorry, if you're buying it for three pounds, there is not the space and the money that you've given to pay a worker fairly. So when I'm looking at a brand, I am looking at how much are they charging for their items? Have they actually charged me enough that they could pay a, a worker fairly? I would also really encourage you to go on an actually sustainable businesses website. One of the businesses that I rated quite low on sustainability for several reasons, you can go and check it out, but I will praise them for the section that they had on their website about how they treat their workers, and that is Tala. You could actually watch videos of their factories. You could see for yourself the factories that they are using. And I think that that is a really positive practice. So I don't just want to highlight negative practices and what to look out for as a red flag, but a great green flag, sorry, I'm waving my imaginary flags. A really positive green flag is if you can actually see pictures. Fast fashion brands are not gonna want you to see inside their factories. Okay, the next red flag that I look out for if they are using virgin plastic in their clothes, if they are making their clothes out of plastic that is not recycled, plastic is not a sustainable material. Plastic that we see in clothes production, the most common one that I see on clothes labels is polyester, but there's also nylon is plastic. I'll try and put some more on screen that are materials that you commonly see used in clothes production that are literally just plastic. Plastic does not break down in landfill. Well, plastic does break down, um, but it breaks into microplastics, which then go into our water systems, they go into our soil, and they affect life on our planet. We don't know the full scope of the impact of microplastics, but we know that animals are dying. Animals in the ocean are dying. Birds are dying because they're eating microplastics and these are created by our plastic clothes. Not just when we dispose of them, also when we wash our clothes, microplastics go into the water systems. Quick aside for how to help with this, I use a guppy bag, which you put your plastic clothes in and it filters out the microplastics so they don't go into the water system. Some brands I have seen who use recycled plastics are selling guppy bags and educating people on how to prevent microplastics going into water systems when you wash your clothes but a lot of fast fashion brands and unsustainable brands are selling plastic clothes with no information about how to wash them responsibly, how to dispose of them responsibly. Let's just remind ourselves where plastic comes from as well. It's not just the end of life impact. It's also the fact that plastic is made from oil. So we're mining oil to make our clothes. It's not the most sustainable way of doing it. If they're selling lots of plastic clothes, it's a red flag. Okay, fourth red flag for me. A brand has one thing that they do that they really shout about and they claim it makes them sustainable. So an example of this is the brand Cider. I recently watched a review on them. I heard somebody saying that they felt it was a sustainable brand because Cider talk about their pre-order system. So you pre-order and they make based on the number of orders they have. Um, and that reduces the waste of clothes that have been produced and then are never bought. Now that's an important issue to raise. We do not want clothes going in the bin that have never been worn. However, Cider are not a sustainable brand. Their clothes are made very poor quality. I haven't looked up what they're from, but I expect a lot of them are from virgin plastic. They are extremely, extremely cheap, which again is a red flag because it means that they cannot possibly be paying their workers fairly. Furthermore, clothes that this person bought, I watched a review, most of them were completely useless, you had to send them back. Now what do they do with the waste of clothes that are just so poor quality, so completely see-through, so poorly made that they don't fit people? What do they do with those clothes? I'm interested, how are they minimising that waste? Because if half the clothes they sell aren't suitable to be worn, they are creating a lot of waste. So that is an example of a brand who are shouting about one thing, but actually they're neglecting the issues of using plastic, microplastics, paying your workers a fair wage, sourcing of materials, so much more to sustainability, disposal of materials. What do they do with their returns? How are they reducing waste in that place? Because a lot of fast fashion brands do incinerate their returns. Anyway, that's my rant about cider. My fifth red flag, and I've seen this on Instagram brands mostly. Some brands I have seen talking about how they are carbon neutral. I would like to know specifically what are you carbon offsetting? 
Are you offsetting the electricity used in your factories? Are you offsetting transportation? Does that include from where your materials were sourced to the place where they were made into like reams of fabric and all of the energy in that production? Does it include then the emissions that are from the creation of the fabric to the place where they are cut and sewn? Does that then include the movement of the created product to the UK, to the US, like wherever it's being sold? Are you offsetting all of that? Are you offsetting the postage to me as the consumer? Are you offsetting the electricity used in your offices? Are you offsetting the electricity used in your stores? I want to know specifically, what are you carbon offsetting? Because a lot, a lot, a lot of resources are used in the creation of garments or any product. This, this can go for pretty much any service in the world. How are you carbon neutral? Please, please tell me. I would love to know. We are a bit guilty of this because some of you might know that me and my husband own a record label and we just could not come up with the figure of how much carbon we emit because there are all of these processes involved in the creation of records. So we made an arbitrary but generous estimate of how much carbon might be created in the production of our records and we offset it. We also chose a carbon offsetting provider who we know and trust. The truth is that if somebody is just planting trees, and I could do a whole video about the scam of carbon offsetting, if someone is just planting trees, it might not actually be good for the environment. Creating a monoculture of one type of plant is negative for biodiversity. It is not a positive thing for biodiversity. It can be damaging to ecosystems. So if somebody's just going to a place and planting loads of the same trees, it's not necessarily sustainable. So we need to think about who we're investing in for carbon offsetting. I want to know who is your carbon offsetting provider and how do they deliver carbon offsetting? The example of the carbon offsetter that we use as a business, give trees to fruit farmers. So the trees will be cared for and provide a living or support a living for farmers. So that was a really positive programme that we wanted to get involved in. But if the tree is not belonging to somebody, if you are just planting a baby tree, then there's no guarantee that that tree is even going to grow and take in its lifetime's worth of carbon. When a brand tells me we are sustainable because we are carbon offsetting, I want to know what are you carbon offsetting? How are you carbon offsetting? And what are you carbon offsetting with? Because tree planting is not the only way to offset carbon. We have many carbon sinks in the world. I don't know who is the press girl for trees in carbon offsetting because we've got the ocean but there's some like swamp plants that are also carbon sinks i would love to know more about these other carbon offsetting schemes and how we can actually offset carbon in different ways i'm not saying that tree planting is always a scam but sometimes it's a scam my final red flag is just a little one i just want to highlight the fact that words such as sustainable biodegradable eco-friendly these are not regulated terms Anybody can write that on their product. We have a home compost, a worm compost. I test things. If, if it says it's compostable, I will put it in the damn compost and see if it biodegrades. And spoiler alert, a lot of it won't dip biodegrade in my home compost. And that doesn't mean it wouldn't in an industrial composter, but people don't have to clarify these things. If something says it is, I want to know where is it gonna break down? What is it gonna break down into? How can I dispose of this responsibly? I want that information as well for a really top tier, sustainable brand. Okay, so that is everything that I wanted to share with you guys. I am gonna put the flags down. I'm done waving my red flags and my one green flag. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful to you. I really hope that you learned from this. I actually really enjoy sharing information verbally. I don't know if I'm very good at it, but I really enjoy it more than writing out long form posts. So if this is how you want to see content from me, if you enjoy listening to this type of thing, then please do drop me a like, drop me a subscribe because it really does help me. Some of you know I don't have a job anymore. So I only need like 990 something more subscribers and then I could start making money from YouTube. So subscribe. I need to get better at ending YouTube videos. I'm, next time I'm gonna come in with a line I'm gonna say and it's gonna be smooth and it's gonna make everyone feel comfortable and happy. But for now, goodbye.